Srinivasa Ramanujan is possibly the greatest Indian mathematician of the modern times. In a short life of 33 years, Ramanujan produced an incredible amount of work on various aspects of number theory. Today's story is about a conversation that took place on a Sunday morning in December 1918 between Ramanujan and possibly his only friend in England those days, Prashanto Chandra Mohlanubish. The story goes like this. The December 1918 issue of the Strand magazine had published a puzzle that Mohlanubish worked on and thought he would try it out on his friend Ramanujan. Here is a problem for you, Mohlanubish said upon entering Ramanujan's room in the Trinity College. What problem? Tell me. Ramanujan replies while preparing the vegetables. In a street, there are houses numbered as per their location. The first house is numbered 1, the second house is numbered 2, the third house is numbered 3 and so on. The total number of houses on the street is between 50 and 500. However, there is one special house numbered M such that the sum of the numbers before that house equals the sum of the numbers after that house. The puzzle is to find out the house with this special property and the total number of houses on the street. If you want to figure it out by yourself, pause the video right about now. We will first try to solve the problem the way any high school student would. Then we will see what Ramanujan did. Let us first try to simplify the left hand side. We can rewrite the left hand side by reversing the order of the numbers. M minus 1 goes here, M minus 2 goes there and so on. We see that each pair of terms within the box adds up to M and there are M minus 1 such terms. Following this procedure, the left hand side simplifies to M times M minus 1 all divided by 2. Now we can also play the same trick with the right hand side as well which gives us this expression. Now we equate the left and right hand side. The final form is written as the difference of two squares. We have only a single equation with two unknowns. Further, only integer solutions are considered acceptable. Such class of equations are known as Diophantine equations. Now, if we look for integer solutions to our equation, we soon see some solutions are easy to find. m and n both equals 1 is a solution. If we persist another solution, m equals 6 and n equals 8 can be found as well. However, these are not our answer yet as n should be between 50 and 500 as the puzzle requires. We take help from a computer to find out the next solution is m equals 35 and n equals 49. Still not our answer. Further search reveals m equals 204 and n equals 288 satisfies our equation. And that's our answer. In fact, there are infinitely many pairs of integer solutions. However, as we move towards larger numbers, solutions become exceedingly rare. Now let us see what Ramanujan did. Please take down the solution, he said, still preparing the vegetables, and went on to dictate an infinite continued fraction. Ramanujan said different solutions for m can be found by truncating this continued fraction at different locations. Let us figure out what he meant by that. At the very first level, the numerator gives the first value of m and the denominator gives the second value of m. So far, so good. Let's see 
what happens at the second level the fraction simplifies to 6 over 35 and sure enough 35 was our third value for him can we take this trick one level higher up we have already obtained the value of the fraction highlighted in the box in the previous level we substitute that value here and further simplify to get 35 over 204 this is magic that's our answer right there the continued fraction is not just the solution to the puzzle that Mukhlanov is asked for rather it presented the infinitely many possible solutions all at once Mohlanov is perplexed by what he has just seen asked how did you do it to this Ramanujan said immediately heard the problem it was clear that the solution should obviously be a continued fraction I then thought which continued fraction and the answer came to my mind the answer came to my mind Robert Canigal writes that was the glory of Ramanujan that so much came to him so readily whether through the divine offices of the goddess Namagiri as he sometimes said or through what westerners might ascribe with equal imprecision to intuition no but really how did Ramanujan go from here to here we don't know for sure but some hints can be found when we realize that our governing equation is a special form of a more general set known as Pale's equation I encourage you to give it a try in case you need a hand I will put some useful links on the description of the video see you on the next one